This next one's sort of the basis for all small ads, in my opinion, in the personals. Good-looking, athletic, Notting Hill-based movie star, millionaire, seeks gullible stunner. Now, the business opportunity section of, uh, of papers, I, I travel up and down the country doing lots of stand-up gigs, and I always sort of read the local paper. It's normally, you know, quite good fun. The business opportunity section, useless for me. Unless you want to buy a cafe in Solihull, no good. <laughs> so I thought I'd try and brighten up with an ad. I placed this. Small minority wanted to spoil it for the rest of us. <laughs> There's always one, is it you? Now, sadly, I didn't get any responses at all to this next one. <laughs> Wanted 30 Chinamen and a Zeppelin for elaborate practical joke. <laughs> now, the announcement section in a local paper should be an interesting thing, but it's not. It's births, marriages and deaths. But, of course, if you know, if you know the person you know, involved in either being born or getting married or dying, you sort of know. You don't need to read it in the paper. So it's a bit pointless. Although my nan used to collect anything to do with our family or friends. She used to collect all the little personals from the local paper and put them in a shoebox. She collected them all for like 50 years. And then she died and we popped them in the bin. <laughs> that's not a joke, that's just what happens. <laughs> anyway, I thought I'd try and, you know, cheer up the announcement section of the paper. I went with this ad. Amanda, I'm running a bit late. We'll be there in about an hour. <laughs> How far apart are the contractions? <laughs> this next one is, well, it's just plain odd, but I ended up putting it in public and legal notices, but only because I was out of ideas as to where to put it. Nemesis wanted. <laughs> I'm five foot ten into kayaking, books and conversation by day. Justice, honour and vengeance by night. <laughs> Seeking arch enemy, possibly crime lord or deformed megalomania. <laughs> this next one's not my finest piece of work, but I, I kind of like it. Speech impediment. There's a new support group for the London area called. <laughs> 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 Now, obviously, we set up all of these with, with real phone lines so people could call up if they wanted to. And we, we put an extra long answer machine message tape for that one because we thought if we get any complaints, it could take a while. <laughs> this next one doesn't have a phone number. I just wanted to get the message out there. Does anyone else think there's something not quite right about Gary Lineker? <laughs> this next one uh, well, might be handy for some of the front row. I'll put it in the lost section. Lost. Virginity. Yes, get in. <laughs> Does anyone here read Private Eye magazine? Oh, quite, quite a few of you. Right. Well, you can attest to the fact that these small ads in the back of Private Eye are mental. <laughs> They're the most mental thing I've seen. It's full of people saying things like, I'm just doing a law degree and I need £5,000 to complete my thesis. And then bank account details. It's the Everest of optimism. I thought I'm getting in on that action. I placed this. Needed, 20k, no questions asked. <laughs> then two weeks later, when no one came up with the money, terrible. I put, all right, 10k, one question, nothing personal. <laughs> I'm willing to compromise, I'm a reasonable man. Now, there's a for sale section in all of these magazines around the country. Hitachi washing machine, DX250, under warranty until kill, 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 kill them all. <laughs> February 2004, in perfect working order, £180 on nearest offer. The reason I'm so pleased with that is because I phoned it in. <laughs> and the only thing the operator said to me was, is that four kills? <laughs> yeah, fine. For sale, holiday photos, choice of ski, sun or city break. <laughs> Ideal for anecdote or alibi. For sale, bonsai tree, large. <laughs> the other thing I've got quite interested in, nay, obsessed by, is the, uh, you know the adverts you get at busy, on railings at busy intersections in rows? Up and down the country you get them all over the place. You've all seen those, yeah? Well, what kind of nutters are replying to those? What well, people are out of work and they're thinking, yeah, the railings, that's the answer. <laughs> 
not a job centre or a friend of a friend, I'll just go with the railing. <laughs> anyway, I, you know, so I thought what I'll do is I'll set up some of my own, I'll put them up around West London, and I'll see who calls. Nut as it turns out. <laughs> I needn't have bothered my ass. But I'll take you through some of the ones that I did anyway. Get rich quick. Simply set up a premium rate phone line. To find out how, just call 0900. <laughs> Lose weight fast. Fed up of dieting and exercise, incredible results guaranteed. Try amoebic dysentery. <laughs> Is your memory letting you down? And what about your memory? Is it letting you down? <laughs> Call for an information pack right now, before you forget. Money worries, work from home, earn pounds. You don't even have to get out of bed. To find out more, just call Pimp Jimmy. <laughs> well, this is the last one of these. Am you grammar letting me down? <laughs> Tuition available. Now call now. This is my favourite thing that I've ever written in a card. No one wants to die alone, tied up in a shed, having been tortured for days. So be my Valentine. <laughs> Anonymity is key to the success of that. <laughs> Valentine's is easy. All you need to do is get a card with a couple of hearts on it and go for the traditional message. I tend to go for the, you know, the really old-fashioned sentiment. I love you. There I said it. Now will you please let me do it up the bum? <laughs> that started a conversation. Great. <laughs> Valentine's is weird, isn't it? Because it's the one day of the year where you get anonymous mail from a stranger saying, I'd like to fuck you, and you go, oh. <laughs> Any other day, that's stalking. <laughs> and I found that out the hard way. <laughs> get well soon. Get well soon cards are difficult, because it says it all on the front, doesn't it? Get well soon. That's all you want to say. So, you know, what do you write inside? Here's what I'd suggest. Or your wife will start looking elsewhere. <laughs> Motivation. <laughs> what about when get well soon is not appropriate? Yeah? I've got a friend, he's quite seriously ill. Getting well soon would be miraculous. Getting well at all, we're told, is a long shot. So, but there was nothing for me in the card shop. I had to make my own card in the end. I went with die with dignity. <laughs> <laughs> he's a funny guy. I think he'll see the funny side. <laughs> and if he doesn't, it's not as if I have to avoid him for long. World's best dad. If you want to see your kids again, leave £10,000 in the bins around the back of Dixon's. <laughs> Congratulations on your results. Negative, who'd have thought? <laughs> Good luck in your exam. I'm sure it's benign. <laughs> I know you think that's offensive, but it's not when you compare it to this. <laughs> I know nothing's happened yet. <laughs> it's a card on the front. There is a girl throwing her hair back, clearly having a brilliant time. She's 16. It just says, you're 16. And then inside I've written, but it's still our little secret. Lots of love, Dad. Congratulations, you're 18. Stone, nearly your target weight. <laughs> I'm having to do a lot of baby cards recently because a lot of my friends are having babies and you've got to do the card for when the baby arrives but also the one when they find out they're pregnant. So, first one, you're having a baby. Thank fuck for that. I thought you'd been getting fat. <laughs> You're having a baby. And that's final. Yours, the Catholic Church. <laughs> oh, they're sticklers for that kind of thing. It's a girl. Better luck next time. Lots of love, the Chinese. <laughs> um, is anyone celebrating anything this evening? Is anyone a birthday, anniversary, anything going on in your lives? 
are you six tuplets or something? What? <laughs> Who's got a birthday up there? Hi. How old are you? Seventeen. Great news, I'm not going to jail. <laughs> and so you're 17, what, today? No, March. March. <laughs> no, sorry, you, you've misunderstood. You come and sit with her. <laughs> we've, uh, we've all got birthdays. <laughs> At different times of the year. When someone says, do you have a birthday, they, they tend to mean now. They don't, <laughs> they don't just mean, were you, were you born of woman? <laughs> March, you can fuck off. <laughs> what, what do you do? Um, I go to school. <laughs> no, I meant sexually. She's 17, that's fine. It's not fine, it's deeply creepy. <laughs> By the way, that woman gave me a thumbs up, though. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, you pop up there and groom her. <laughs> I'll be up in a minute, you bloody weirdo. <laughs> Has anyone else got a birthday? More legitimate. You've got a birthday. <laughs> well, how old are you? Uh, 26. You're 26 tomorrow? OK, well, that's a problem. Well, what's your name? David. David, all right, I'll write your card, David. <laughs> what, what do you do? I'm a You're a doctor. Okay. Happy birthday, <laughs> David. I, m my wrist. What's happened? <laughs> <laughs> How annoyed are you at that? <laughs> Everyone you've ever met. <laughs> I've got a terrible rash on my cock. <laughs> of course, the thing they never do on soaps is watch TV, and that's because they'd see all their dead friends on the bill. Have you just spotted the AIDS? Well done. <laughs> Whenever I see a sticker on the back of a car saying Princess on board, it always makes me think of Diana. <laughs> I always think, don't upset Prince Philip, you'll be fine. <laughs> what? I didn't fucking kill her, don't give me a hard time. What superpower would I most like to have? I've given that quite a lot of thought. I think that's the sort of thing men think about quite a lot. What superpower would be best? I think invisibility would be the coolest superpower to have. <laughs> and really, the question is, if I was invisible, what would I do second? <laughs> I think we all know what I would do first. <laughs> Let's face it, if I was invisible, they'd think the ladies' changing rooms were haunted. <laughs> Where's all this ectoplasm coming from? It seems to be... <laughs> Something just tapped me on the head. <laughs> Manners cost nothing. <laughs> I have a lot of ideas, and I'd like to share some of my ideas with Glasgow this evening. Yes, I'd like to share some ideas with all, all of you good people. I'm working on a book at the moment. I'm working on a book, it's about a zombie that comes back from the dead, but the twist is the zombie is the good guy but apparently it's already been done. It's called the Bible. <laughs> it's annoying, isn't it? I've had an idea for a TV show. It's called Jim'll Fix It. <laughs> it's just me spaying cats. The first guy that persuaded a blind person they needed sunglasses, he must have been a hell of a salesman. <laughs> There's a lot of problems in the world, so I like to do a little bit of problem solving every day, try and make the world a slightly better place. British women, that's you ladies, British women last year spent £280 million removing unwanted body hair. Surely it would be cheaper and easier just to move to Germany. <laughs> if you're worried about putting on a few extra pounds and you want to be ready for next summer with your beach body, why don't you visit Somalia and get some fucking perspective? <laughs> There's people with real problems, you fat cow. 
I've solved another problem. It's only a little thing, but little and often with problem solving is probably the best way to do it. Um, I've invented a bird table for my back garden. It's three foot tall and it saves a fortune on cat food. <laughs> I tell you who I think should team up. Neighbourhood Watch and Peeping Toms. <laughs> it's a good idea, isn't it? A marriage made in heaven. And it would add a whole new dimension to the term curtain twitching. Because <laughs> curtain twitching could mean checking up on the neighbours, seeing everything's OK. Or curtain twitching, female masturbation. <laughs> I feel we've crossed a line, haven't we, Glasgow? We've... <laughs> We've definitely crossed the line. <laughs> facts. We've all got loads of facts inside our heads. It's something to do with living in this internet age. Uh, British people are at least one inch taller than we were 20 years ago. And that's because 20 years ago, we were all children. <laughs> 40% of people use their mobile phone to cheat on their partner. I use Mr Tinkle. Mr. Tinkle is just a silly name I've got for my tummy banana. <laughs> Most bingo winners don't tell their other halves about their windfall, and that's because their husbands are dead. <laughs> there are 427 licensed professional jockeys currently working in the UK. If you laid them all from end to end, they would stretch from here to here. <laughs> An iguana can stay underwater for 28 minutes or longer if you don't mind it dying. <laughs> Interesting little fact for you obsessive Star Trek fans are known as. <laughs> virgins. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Are you a big Star Trek fan? But, you, but how, how old are you? Do you mind me asking? You seem like... Eight. What, sorry? 20. 20. Right. So, so definitely not a virgin in Glasgow. <laughs> what, what do you do for a living? Um, I'm a secretary. You're a secretary? Yes. Nice. Is it 1950 already? <laughs> what? 2010, actually. What? All right. You seem, you seem a bit chippy. <laughs> oh, it is Glasgow, sorry. <laughs> I'd love to chat more, but I'm at work. So <laughs> Yeah, this will cheer you up. <laughs> oh, and you've gone for that. Nice. <laughs> what a lady. <laughs> Let's talk about language. I'm slightly obsessed by language. I spend my life toying with it and messing around with it and, and trying to, you know, write jokes for you good people to laugh at. A lot of people don't like it when language changes. A lot of people don't like it, don't like Starbucks, for example, because what was small, medium and large is now tall, grande and venti. But I like the fact I've now got a tall cock. That's taken away a lot of the stigma. <laughs> a lot of people change the language that they use so as not to offend certain interest groups or individuals, which is fair enough. You know how touchy queers are. <laughs> I've gone for some comedy T-shirts, which I'd, I'd like to show you. They're just up here. You know, the comedy T-shirt, it's, it's an underutilised medium, in my opinion. Hang on. <laughs> what? It's a perfectly normal thing to do. Sell a bit away, you know, the Rolling Stones do it, why not me? Uh, this is the first one that I did, it's, uh, I'm a stupid, what do you think? It says I'm a stupid, so you can wear it, and the person next to you, mm. <laughs> you know, I'm a stupid. It's got jimmycar.com on the sleeve, I'm a stupid. On the back it says, the National Association of Special Needs Carers. <laughs> Says my girlfriend went on a UN-sponsored trip to investigate child labour in the Far East. <laughs> and all I got was this lousy T-shirt. <laughs> See, there's a very serious issue there. Children as young as 10 are working, you know, 80 hours a week in sweatshops in the Far East, stitching trainers. I wouldn't mind, but it's a workmanship that suffers. <laughs> this one's rather predictable, but it's kind of fun as well. It's the Christian Alliance Against Bad Language. Can fuck off. <laughs> 
Got another religious one now, but for a reason. This is the best-selling T-shirt ever in the world. Jesus loves you. It's the most popular T-shirt ever. Jesus loves you. He's not in love with you. <laughs> I was going to go for, he's not fussy about looks. <laughs> I thought, no. Incidentally, if we're all God's children, what's so special about Jesus? <laughs> this is love hurts. It's a nice sentiment, isn't it? Love hurts. It sort of shows a sensitive side. Love hurts. Try a lubricated finger. <laughs> this takes a little bit of explaining. It's True Love Waits is the slogan. It's the slogan of the Promise Keepers. They're an organisation in America that believe in holding on to their virginity and chastity until marriage. Britney Spears was a member. I think there's some footage of her leaving on the internet. <laughs> anyway, their slogan's True Love Waits. I thought, uh, True Love Waits is such a lovely slogan. It deserves a T-shirt. True Love Waits. Pulls out and comes on her tits. <laughs> Well, I imagine you're getting the hang of this by now, so, you know, try and guess this one. It's see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. What do you think? No idea? See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Row hypnol. <laughs> Actually, there was, there, was a, there was a story in the paper earlier this year. There was a story about an Englishman arrested in Iron Apple for taking advantage of three girls by putting Rohypnol in their drinks. What's the world coming to? In Iron Apple. <laughs> You're telling me Rohypnol is now cheaper than three Bacardi Breezers? <laughs> now this one, this is, a, this is a picture that the man on my right, your left, is, is on fire. Can you all see that? He's on fire. <laughs> Special Olympics torture arrives. <laughs> I used to have table football in the house. We had foosball in the front room of the house. It was brilliant. Then she moved in. She hated it. She said it was too blokey. So what I did was I filled the table football up with water, and now we play synchronised swimming. <laughs> she came home the other day. She was all excited. She was thrilled with herself. She said, I saw a man with one platform shoe. I said, no, you saw a man with a club foot. <laughs> no one's got one platform shoe. No one's half into 70s fashion. <laughs> Unless it was Heather Mills on the way home from a disco. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> a friend of mine dresses his Labrador in a yellow fluorescent jacket and takes it everywhere he goes. It looks ridiculous. Is he blind? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, he's never going to see the show. <laughs> Why do deaf people watch TV so late at night? Is it because they always sleep through the alarm? <laughs> I'm not sure if it counts as incest, but I'm pretty sure when I was growing up, my dad was fucking my mum. <laughs> I woke up with an erection this morning. On reflection, I wish it had been my own. Saw a headline in the paper, it said, Homeless shelter burns down. I thought, well, what are they now? <laughs> Homeless, sir? <laughs> no, they were trapped inside. They're all dead. <laughs> if you know the difference between a kayak and a canoe, you probably don't know what it's like to have sex. <laughs> The highest speed ever achieved on a bicycle was done by a British man, 146 miles per hour on a bicycle. That is pretty impressive. It was recorded at a level crossing. <laughs> Still counts. The Great Wall of China, longest wall in the world, not one cash point. Some people think Islamic fundamentalism is a very real threat. What I want to know is, when are the Salvation Army going to step up to the plate? <laughs> the most commonly shoplifted book in the world is the Bible. Yeah. Which sounds weird, but then makes perfect sense, because how are you meant to know not to steal it till you've read it? <laughs> I got handed a leaflet in the street saying, God loved you so much, he nailed himself to a cross. I thought, what? One-handed? <laughs> The Pope, the Pope doesn't approve of condoms, which is fair enough, he's entitled to his opinion. But how does he suggest I smuggle cocaine? 
<laughs> if I went on to Dragon's Den, I would pitch the dragons a device that makes you less of a self-satisfied smug cunt. <laughs> I've discovered there's a big difference between having something engraved for someone and having something of theirs keyed. <laughs> to rejoice in someone else's misfortune, the Germans call it schadenfreude. We call it, you've been framed. <laughs> they say revenge is best served cold, and they say revenge is sweet. So really what they're saying is, revenge is ice cream. I think it goes without saying. <laughs> I'm glad you agree. Um, <laughs> I was tempted just to go for 40 minutes. That would have been, <laughs> that would have been terrifically funny or shit. <laughs> Maybe shit. Um, I've had an idea for a children's book. I was going to run it past you. It's an idea for a children's book. It's about a boy that can see into the future after he gets raped by a unicorn. <laughs> for a bittersweet. <laughs> we don't have an ensuite bathroom, but we do have plastic sheets. <laughs> if anything, it's more convenient. <laughs> I was in the cinema and something struck me. I think it was a peanut M&M. <laughs> I'm a great driver. Last year, I got 25 points. <laughs> if you're Scottish and you don't want to know how you're going to die, look away now. Heart disease. <laughs> when my doctor told me I had heart problems, I took it with a pinch of salt. <laughs> to cut a long story short, Frodo does it. <laughs> Well, we've just done, ladies and gentlemen, somewhere in the region of 60 jokes in 10 minutes. That's quite a lot of jokes per minute. That represents value for money during the credit crunch, I believe. <laughs> well done, me. What I've been trying to do is write the shortest joke possible so I can pack even more jokes into the show. So last year in the show, I had a four-word joke. It's only four words long, but it's a proper joke. Yeah. Venison's dear, isn't it? <laughs> it's only four words. That doesn't fuck about. It gets straight to the point. <laughs> So this year I thought, well, I'll go one louder. I'll attempt a three-word joke. So for your delight and delectation, stationary store moves. <laughs> Clearly not impressive enough. I will now attempt a two-word joke. Dwarf shortage. <laughs> I've had some ideas. I'll kick off with some ideas. I've had an idea for a rape alarm that when you press it, it plays the Benny Hill theme music. <laughs> you know, to make it more of a caper. <laughs> some advice for you. The best way to test the temperature of a bath is with a baby's elbow. I've had an idea of how to prop up our currency, the pound, against the euro and the dollar. What we do is we print new pounds, and this time the Queen is smiling. And if things get really bad, tits out, Your Majesty. <laughs> Little joke for you. What'd you get if you crossed the Queen and Prince Philip? Killed in a tunnel. <laughs> Too soon? It's been 14 years. Get over it. <laughs> All right, point taken. I'll drop that from the Royal Variety. <laughs> I say that, Prince Philip would probably piss himself. Although he's 82, he'd probably piss himself anyway. 